Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Connie Ray and thank you for joining me today. I have a card tutorial today, which is this card here. Um, this is using the Irresistibly, Irresistibly Floral Designer Designer Series Paper Specialty Papers. These are the white stack of papers that you get and you can colour them yourself. Um, I have been practising with these today and I love them. I really love them. They've got so much versatility. Like you can, they're beautiful just using them on their own, and they're lovely to colour. And they've got these gorgeous white hard patterns embossed in them. See, they come like this. I'll see if I can get a picture for you. You can see the white lines there. Okay, so they come like that, and you can colour them with um, any ink that you prefer, um, and you can create backgrounds that. Um, of any color any design you can uh, blend different colors in you can use them for just about whatever your little heart desires um so and they come like this and they come in a stack and it's just like i want to show you see if i can show you this see that beautiful pattern oh, i just love it it's so like a isn't that gorgeous i can't wait to see what i can make with this it's just so beautiful it's got this gorgeous sheen on it so you can color it or you can use it as is i found that this was very white um, and I was actually going to make a white card using this technique here, but it's very bright white. So what that means is when I was doing the card, the sample was that it sort of came off a bit bright white. Oh, it doesn't look too bad on camera, but I found that during normal daylight, this looked like more like a vanilla white and this looked like a bright bright white and I just found it was a little bit off-putting I didn't like the combination so therefore I went to the black and decided to make a black card using these techniques anyway that being said oh I've got so many ideas for this stuff I love it really like it so that's what I've used today and I have gone in and I have already um, done a few things so that I don't take up your time I've already done my embossing and this is out of the sweet sayings and it says they say it's your birthday so I've already embossed that onto my card front and I've already prepared half of the flower and I'll show you the other half you're going to need your petite petals punch I think that's what it's called I've always forget this one's name you need that one you need the one and three quarters of an inch punch uh, scallop punch and you need the two and three eighths inch scallop punch. Now I have gone in and I have punched out my, um, they call it acetate on the website. Uh, some people call it window sheet. Um, acetate I think is a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher the window sheet. I'm not really sure, but this is called acetate. Um, this is a designer series paper. No, designer <laughs> acetate. Um, what I've done is I've cut a circle out using the Big Shot and I've also done cut out these little flowers using my punch. But my punches are getting a little bit tired of doing this. They're not really coping very well because it is a little bit thick. So I wouldn't, after doing it a few times, I wouldn't really do it with the scallop punches. I would do it with the framelit framelit dies um because they've got the scallop ones there so you can do that with those dies and it probably would be better to draw on the big shot i have done this circle on the big shot um let me just bring the black card up so you can see it i've done that circle on the big shot and it went through really really well the punches they're starting to get a bit cranky with me <laughs> they don't really like doing that so i've stopped using the punches and i will reprocessing everything else like this acetate through the big shot because i don't want to ruin my punches because the punches are too handy, aren't they? So it saves you pulling out the big shot. Okay, so I'm having one of those days. I don't know about everybody else, but I tell you, every time I touch something, it falls over. Every time I go to pick something up, I knock it over. So be careful. If you're watching, stay tuned. Okay, <laughs> don't lose me. All right, so um, I might leave the flower just, just a little bit more. I'll do, leave that little construction bit there. Now this is the card that we're making and it is beautiful. It's so pretty. Isn't it lovely? It's really pretty to look at. Um, so basically I'll show you how I've actually um, tinted the designer series paper. The irresistibly floral designer series paper specialty paper. 
and try keep practicing that before I put the camera on and do you think I could get it right no anyway you'll be able to see it. it's item 141644 just for those who are really interested and it's on the store if you go and click up on the right you know you can go straight into the store and buy it or have a look at it and it's pretty hard to see but you will see that they've actually stained it there in a couple of the um, diagrams so but I thought that I would um, show you how it's done so you can use like I said you can use any ink I've used stamping up ink I've used um, distress ink this one this is a ranger distress ink and this is seedless preserves so I'm going to actually use this no other reason other than the fact I like the way the color came out but then um, what was I doing I was mucking around with a um, trial for Father's Day on a piece that was left and I'd started doing colors on that one and I've done um, the black and that's sky blue that I've blended in there so pretty hard to see on camera but in some light you can see it so but anyway um and they were uh, they were the stamping up colors so pretty easy with anyone with any color and I'm just using a um, blender sponge you can use just a normal sponge like this the trick is not to start swirling on the paper it's to start swirling off the paper and then onto your designer paper done as a designer series paper so that you don't have any blobby bits anywhere that being said I've done plenty of blobby bits so I'll just show you how I've done it so basically I'm just going to ink up my sponge dabby thing <laughs> my blender just give it a good ink up and just take off the excess I've got a piece of paper down here just tap off the excess and just go round and as you go round just merge onto the actual paper and you'll see straight away that it starts to work so around the edges blending down onto the cardstock and it comes up beautifully and I do love it so magical such a gorgeous um and the white the white um, lines are actually shiny so they're sort of like um, um, I don't know what they're not they're not card well they're cardstock but it's shiny cardstock so it's got this really unusual finish on it and the coloring on this paper you color it in and that part still stays white and shiny and I'll show you when I finish what it actually looks like so it's kind of um interesting how um it works and it's just fabulous and it's also a lot stronger too because I, when I've cut it to make the flowers it's actually um, the flowers actually that I make which I've made before and this card is very similar to one that I've previously uploaded and you've probably already seen that but I just liked the color combination and I did it with the silver rather than the gold um, see how that's coming up isn't that awesome so you can barely see it on the white component but then when you add the color it comes up better isn't that great I love it it gives you such a, um, an option for um, style and color um, in terms of whatever it is that you're making you've got a choice of what background you would like um, with the backgrounds that they're provided but also you've got the choice of the color so that's really um, pretty good isn't it I like it so you can just keep blending this to be as dark as you want it or as light as you want it it doesn't really matter it's your choice it depends on what you're doing really and it's a fun way to actually get it's a good activity to do because you get to see the color changing in front of you it's just so cool especially if you love color i love color i don't like color on me but i like colors and i like bright bursty colors and I like mixing colors they're just so different and bright I like bright stuff and there's so much stuff around now isn't there when it comes to creating I'm just inundated but inks ink but not all inks of the same papers paper but not all papers the same depends what you're doing but thank goodness for YouTube I'd say because we can learn as we go okay so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty pretty happy with that color I think 
if I had more time, I'd probably go a bit darker because I think the original one is a little bit darker. But I really just want to show that technique of how that changes when you actually do that. And um, I wonder if you can see the, you see the shiny white bits? There? Yeah, there you can see. You've got the white um, indentations of the pattern that stay white. So it gives it this gorgeous, you know, ah, love it. So anyway, that's how I have coloured in my background. Well, actually, it's not really my background. It's um, my banner and my flowers are made out of this. So I'll just move that all out of the way now that we've got that down. So um, I punched out, um, let me just bring up a black piece of paper, the silver flowers. Um, I have done one of the big one and three quarter of the acetate <laughs> um, and I've done one of the one and three quarter uh, small ones and I have done one of the petal pop puree in the acetate and this one here so you're going to need three so that we're going to build up the flower um, and as I said um, with your acetate you might want to run it through a big shot if you've got the opportunity to make the scallops out of that rather than through there so I've already done most of the flower but I did want to show you how I got to where I am with it now so you've got the you've got your big circle uh, that's three inches that's two and a half by two and a half so that's two and a half that big circle and it's a three inch die okay all right so what we're going to do is this is I'll just pop that over there turn this around so you can see it so I'm going to stick this I might just stick this down now just on the bottom of the card hmm, there we go now my thing has decided not to work okay have I run out oh yes that's all right we'll use this one If in doubt, there's always glue somewhere. <laughs> okay, good. so we'll just, that's going to be nice and sticky, that's for sure. Okay, so um, just leave a little bit of black space on the bottom when you pop this on. Just under your word. Don't be surprised if this doesn't come out straight, people, because I tell you, I'm having one of those days. Oh no, all good, looks good so far all right so just under your sentiment there just pop that little thing there it just gives a little bit of balance when you're creating the card the next thing I have done is I have created a banner and I'll just quickly chop the banner I think I it was about two inches but I might do one and three quarters with the banner I've just created the banner myself just going basically by feel sorry I keep turning around so I can see it but then you might be able to see it so I just wanted to create a little bit of balance when I made the, the banner originally so it goes about there I think so what I'll do is I'll just quickly cut that snip it in and make the banner Just stick that down as well and then trim it. <laughs> like I said, nothing is working for me today. All right, so I just want to have it balanced in alignment with the sentiment. Maybe a bit higher. But plenty of room for the flower to flourish as well. On there, there we go. Not straight. Okay. No, that's not too bad. All right. Now I'll just trim that off. I'll just put some of the 
color on the end of it, blend it in a bit in that trim. Okay, so that's the banner, that's that part. Now, as I said, I've partially assembled the flower. I'm using the silver side. This is double-sided, this acetate window sheet. It's got a gold side, very hard to see, but the dots are gold. Well, all the patterns are either gold or you turn them over and they're silver. And I'm using the silver because I've embossed in silver as well. So I'm popping it about, hmm, let me see. I want the banner to just kind of have a little bit of a peeky boo look. So when I put it down, I want the banner just a little bit to be able to be seen. So I'm going to use dimensionals because you won't see these um, under the flower. Might use two really close to each other though, because I don't like it when you look down the side of a card and you can see lots of dimensionals. It's not very nice, I don't think anyway. All right, looks good to me. All right, so we've partially constructed the flower and I'm up to a top level. So what have I done? Yes, that's right. Okay, so I'm up to the last and final level. So what I'll do is I'll just stick this on to the actual window sheet where I want it placed. And then I'll just build up the rest of the flower on top. Now it doesn't look like anything went on this picture but trust me it's very elegant and it's very pretty very pretty when you look at it. Okay so what you do is when you've punched out your window sheet and your cardstock you've got the scalloped edge. Now it's the same as the previous flowers that I've actually done on this uh, on my channel here. Um, it's the flowers that are all over the um, YouTube, you can get lots of different style flowers, but this is how I've done these particular ones. I love flowers. So basically what we do is we go around um, every second scallop edge. I could just show you there, just every second scallop edge, and I'm going to cut into the middle, towards the middle, and make a little heart. So you go like that. Whoop, there we go, just creating a little heart. So And you just do that all the way around, both the window sheet and the cardstock and just go into the center and just do little hearts until you've done them all. Once you've done them all, I have used um, two different size paint brushes. For the bigger one, I used a thicker end paintbrush and for the thin one, I have used, sorry, the small one, I have used a little bit thinner. The reason why is this paper actually um, it can be the fra uh, the fibers can be bent quite well and it stays in shape but i wanted these petals to be bigger and these ones obviously to be in size for the, the actual flower so that's how i've done it and you can see here if you just use your you can use a pen you can use a pencil you can use a brush but i'm using this in particular because it's thin here and it thickens as it goes down so when you twirl it you can just go in like that and it just leaves this gorgeous um twist on the petal so it really helps um, maintain the flower. Some people spritz them, make them wet and um, leave them overnight and then come back and put the card together. I find with this, because these white fibres, the, the, the white patterns, are, I'm not quite sure what they're made of, but they're a little bit tougher than the average um, designers, uh, sorry, cardstock or paper. So I find that these ones actually bend really, really well for some reason. So, um, yeah, I'm liking them. Anyway, that's how I've made the flowers. And you can do this with the window sheet. The window sheet, the acetate window sheet, is a little bit trickier, but you can do it. You can bend it. And if you're careful, you won't put marks, white streaks through the actual window sheet. You'll be able to get away with just popping it, um, um, squeezing it together. So there you go. I've made that little flower so that it actually stands out. And as you can see, I've already done the window one. I've created the little love hearts. It's not. It's pretty hard to see, isn't it? There you go. So create a little love heart, and I've already bent them up. See so if I fold that in half, and just squeeze it in like that. Oh, I told you everything jumps away from me today. Um, yeah, squeeze them in towards the colour that you want. Bend them up, and they'll be fine. So, all right. So we'll just pop this one on. Again, I'm going to put a, another. 
dimensional on there. I think this flower is a bit bigger than my last one, but that's okay. It still looks good. Okay, let's squash it down. And I will be putting on a dimensional on this one as well. Actually, I might just do half dimensional just to be on the safe side because I don't like it sticking out. Half a dimensional on this one. We've got the tiny flower to go on top so that will hide all of the um, construction process. Just popping it on, popping it down with your finger if you like. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Just get that out of the way. There we go. Okay, so squeezing it down. And then finally, we're going to just do this one. You don't have to cut this one, this tiny little one. You can just bend it up, just like a little flower. Just use the bottom part of your brush or if you've got one of the um, foam mats and use the end of your stylus just to make it pop up I've done that actually I couldn't tell you where my mat is at the moment I've got no idea where I put that I haven't seen it for a long time <laughs> and basically we're just going to pop that on again we're going to use half a dimensional or a tiny piece of dimensional I don't think we need to use too much on that but the dimensional just gives the flower height and makes it look really good And then with this one, I put that on gold. I put it up the wrong way. Oh, well, there you go. Doesn't matter. All right, so with this one, we're just going to use a little glue dot. And to stick the last one down. Just pop it on there. And then I'm going to turn this one over so we end up with silver. And there you go. So you can scrunch it down quite a bit, but it still holds its, um, as you can see, it still holds its volume quite well. Whoop. I'll just turn it on the side there so you can see. Whoop. Get my bearings. There you go. You can see actually see the flower itself. Um, it's pretty hard to see when you're, there you go. So it's all scalloped up. It's really quite pretty. I like it. And I think you'll love it too when you've actually gone ahead and done it. And um, or gone ahead and made it, I should say. And the recipient, I think, is going to love it as well. So that's always a bonus. Now I've got some dimensionals to pop on. So on this one little flower here on the top, I'm just going to... Did I just call them dimensionals? I did, didn't I? These diamantes. Goodness me. I'm telling you. It's just the kind of a day all right and just again just um, putting some diamantes just to enhance your creation whichever way you've chosen to go with it it is a fun technique but I think overall the idea of this tutorial for me was to actually show those two techniques well a few techniques in the way that you can make a card and change the paper especially with those that designer series paper you can create any kind of card that you like in terms of color but also using window sheets and your punches or your, your dies and how to make a flower so i think that overall those techniques can be used again and again i'm just going to put on my um, build my card up to the last part. I'm actually surprised it hasn't gone too badly. So I was thinking maybe I should do this tomorrow. I think I'm guessing sort of getting a bit of a bug or something. You know how you just feel a bit off and everything just just gets to you. Well, you're very clumsy. Yeah, I'm having one of those ones. So okay, that looks pretty good. So, but I thought no, I'm going to push on. I'm going to do it. Persistence is key, as they say. Don't give up. <laughs> After about, you know, three or four attempts, you think, really? Why am I doing this? And then you think, ah, it's for the love of the art. All right. So lining it up. Now, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but I'm lining it up as best I can. And again, you've got the top and the bottom of the card and my mat. Of course, my card is typically 
the 11 by 3 yeah sorry 11 by 4 and a quarter and it's um scored at five and a half and my mat is five and a quarter by four see my brain just isn't working tonight i'm telling you okay so that's the card all finished all pretty now of course you know when you go to give it to someone you can do two things you can write with if you've got really lovely handwriting fantastic i would use this gorgeous um white pens i love it, the white chalky look on especially if you've got beautiful writing i think it looks really nice but my writing isn't i don't think that good so i usually get my husband to write the cards because he's got really nice handwriting um uh, you can always just cut a piece of white cardstock and pop it into the center to write your message to the recipient so that's entirely up to you i'll do the front you can do the inside so that's it thank you for watching um i have got a few plans coming up because we've got we've had the sneak peek and the pre-order for the christmas stuff i've already i'm waiting for my delivery that's all i can say i can't wait to get it because there's a lot of stuff coming up online from other demonstrators as well and i keep seeing them i think oh i'm getting card envy and 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 um pre-order envy and um stash envy and all of that stuff because there's just some fantastic stuff in it this year i've got to say i can't wait so um i will be back hopefully soon with a tutorial not a clumsy day but back with a new tutorial um one that's exciting enough for you to come back and have a look please support my channel and me because i am a stay-at-home mum with my husband of course and um i craft because i choose to um so you know everything helps but up in the right hand corner you can click on my shop and go and purchase the stuff if you live in australia if you want to join um stamping up you can do so you end up getting basically 25 percent off plus other bonuses um but that's entirely up to you you don't there's no pressure to do that you can still go in and shop and you can still um check out do an online purchase and check out with no pressure at all so um i do hope you've enjoyed the tutorial i hope to see you again soon and pop back and have a go at this pause it when you need to because that's what i do when i do tutorials if i'm doing a tutorial and i think what what, what 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 did they just do and then i just have to rewind it and go back so have a bit of play have a bit of practice especially with the sponging technique on that paper because it's so pretty um it's really worth um a go at doing that so i would give it a shot if i was you so thanks for joining me take care and hope to chat to you all soon thanks for joining me bye for now